Hi, this is Dr. Johnson Haas, and welcome back to GEOS 1000 online. And in this short video, I'm going to introduce you to essentially what the first learning module of the course is all about, uh, how to proceed, how to get going, uh, and move forward. The first learning module of this course focuses, before even getting down to the details of, of earth sciences and geology, which will be most of this course, the first learning module focuses upon trying to show you what science is about and how it operates. And to some extent to inoculate you against what we call pseudoscience, which is something that may pretend to have scientific jargon associated with it, but it is usually a scam or some kind of uh, alternative medicine scheme. Um, and you need to be able to be successful in life to be able to make good decisions to, to tell one from the other, to see if it's worth looking into an alternative method. Uh, alternative medicine modality when in fact the science behind it is really bad. So the first learning module of this course is about stuff like that. It's about how to tell science from pseudoscience, how to recognize logical fallacies, uh, which are basically flaws in an argument that are that can be generalized to a degree that you can remember them as sort of a mental toolkit. And if you watch the videos that I've posted for this course in this section of Science and Skepticism, uh, that will get you going. That's essentially the lecture content for this section. So to get you going, one of the first things I'll start with, and, and I want to make this brief, is to make sure what you get out of the first lab and this module is a better understanding of what science is about. And most of you may have uh, a somewhat mistaken impression of what science is based upon TV shows and movies, where scientists are presented as all-knowing oracles of some kind and people consult them for wisdom. Uh, and you could probably get this impression that science is all about memorizing a list of facts so that you could, when called upon, you can regurgitate them. But that's not at all what science is about. Uh, science is a process. It's a frame of mind. Uh, it's basically willing to say, I don't know, let's find out. Do experiments, hunt around in rocks, do tests, and have other people check your work. What you want to look for is whether work has been peer-reviewed by other scientists, where it's not just one loner but there's actually a lot of body of work of tens, hundreds, of, maybe even up to thousands of other scientists over decades having already established. And to counter that, you have to counter all of that. Science is basically about how to become less wrong. It is the method we use to interrogate reality and to see what's out there. And it's gotten us pretty far so far. This first module of the course really wants to get down to what the mentality of a scientist is. It's not that we are trying to prove anything. And that's the first mistake people will make. Scientists prove things. No, 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 we actually don't. We look for things to try. And if they show something that disproves an idea, we can disprove it. Science basically is a process where lots of different ideas are on the table, and we investigate each one, and we can knock it off the table. It winnows out the alternatives down to what's actually real. But it takes a lot of people doing a lot of hard work. It's not that you're a universal expert. I'm an expert in one part of the field of geochemistry within geology, within our sciences. And I'm pretty well educated about some, some adjacent fields, but beyond that, you ask me how to do heart surgery, I have no idea. So part of science is investigating honestly the world, uh, taking the answers that the universe gives you in your experiment, and uh, if it's not what you want, or if it goes counter to your favorite idea, okay, your favorite idea has to go away to be thrown out. And science is hard work, it's tedious, it's meticulous, and uh, it can't work any other way because you just get shoddy results and they couldn't be reproducible. You have to be careful in science. Chapter one talks about not just the difference between science and pseudoscience, but the history of science. Modern scientific approaches that have led to the discovery of some really big things, like the concept of plate tectonics or biological evolution, the deep age of the earth, a lot of things that uh, science has unlocked. We've unlocked a lot of achievements by experimenting with reality on its own terms. It tends to deliver the goods. Chapter 1 also includes a section that I don't see in a lot of other textbooks, and it's part of the reason I chose this one. The authors talk about the modern plague in the world of science denial. The idea that you can simply wish part of reality away because you don't like it, or for ideological reasons, promote ideas that run counter to what we know to be actually true about the world. For example, that the Earth is round, 
uh, that, in fact, we did go to the moon. Life did evolve over a very long time that includes billions of years. There is a lot of denial of science. The change of the climate due to anthropogenic changes to the Earth's atmospheric chemistry, which changes the infrared heat budget of the atmosphere. Pretty straightforward. But a lot of people, for ideological reasons or monetary reasons, have made it a problem in modern culture that is an active denial of science. And I have to say, as a human being living in, in, on Earth, this is new to me too. Uh, growing up in the early 70s to the 80s, uh, in my own case, uh, there wasn't a lot of that, except for some entrenched stuff uh, about uh, young Earthism that that's, was around since uh, the 1920s and before that. The chapter deals a little bit with this and introduces you to the, the idea that you should be aware of this and take this into account and helps in that process to take account of sources, to take account of the reliability of the information or the data that you have and, and being able to assess it, and also, frankly, a respect for expertise, that if people spend decades of their life becoming an immersive expert in a topic, you probably want to ask people like that if you want a high-level, complex, professional opinion in that topic. And it doesn't mean scientists are infallible. We're human beings. But it means that if there's a consensus among lots and lots of scientists on a key frame question, and they're all working at it from different directions, and they all converge on the same answer, and a lot of these people are in direct competition with each other, um, that's where you come up with something that's a bit more trustworthy. It stands up to a lot more scrutiny because it's endured it already. So in the first lab of the course, what I'm trying to do is have you understand what scientific approach to problems is, and part of it is the mentality, the approach of, let's honestly confront interrogating reality. Uh, but the other part is being meticulous and being careful and precise. And in science, it matters in almost every step of the process. It's not even almost. It, it matters in every step of the process. So in lab two, what I'm going to have you start doing is, on one hand, confronting the idea of deep time, which I'll come back to in another video to sort of introduce you to that next. Not just look at the facts of deep time and the, the numbers of the time periods that geologists name parts of Earth's history, but in doing the road trip through time, I'm calling upon you to do what a scientist does in exercising precision, to take this task and to precisely measure your distance across that path that I lay out for you to take, and to do it accurately enough so that if you were to do it as a test, three times in a row, you can get the same answer all three times. The test is to be on the right path at the right place in the path, to look around and see what's the closest landmark. It's not busy work. It's actually meant to teach you a couple of things. One is how to be careful, how to do precise, repeated measurements, but also to teach you the scale of deep time. And I'll say this, mu this much now, and I'll talk about more in the next one, but um, by doing a road trip across the country, you get a scale sense of a multi-day trip, which would take you in real life. How far do you get to, to go back to when the dinosaurs went extinct? How many kilometers do you go from starting point at the Golden Gate Bridge? It's not very far. So that's one of the, that's one of the lessons of Lab 2. And people who have trouble with Lab 2, I want to try to reassure you, the main thing you have to get and click in your head is an equivalence that I'm making in that lab between time in the past and distance along a physical pathway. And so by the conversion factor of one million years to one kilometer, if I say go back to, from starting point, the point when the dinosaurs went extinct, which is 66 million years ago, is a free answer, um, you would go 66 kilometers. So that's the main trick. Just make that equivalence, be careful, and then as you arrive at landing points, the test will be, can you get to the right landing point? Because if you're doing geology and you think you're looking through a, a stack of strata, and you think you have the one that you need to look for fossils in, because that's part of your grant-funded project, you better be in the right place. So you have to check a lot of things to make sure you are, and you're not wasting your time. So I won't waste any more of your time. That sort of introduces the first lab, and previews a bit on the second one, and if your people are starting the second one now, uh, please think of it the way I was describing, and you'll have uh, a lot less trouble with it. So um, I'll sign off for now, and the next one will be about Lab 2, 
and I'll preview a little bit about Lab 3 uh, because that's part of the same uh, learning module.